you guys doing today? Welcome to this week's pre-foreclosure tip of the week. Pre-foreclosure daily grinds, Chris the Drummer Bulls and Bob LaChance. How you guys doing? This week we're going to be talking about Bank of America again and SunTrust. And SunTrust. So no worry, we're mixing it up for you yeah, guys. We're mixing bit. it up. But, <laughs> but this Bank of America uh, deal is actually pretty appalling. Um, and we're actually going up the ranks right now. It's, a, it's an investor loan, which is Fannie Mae owns it. Mm. So we're actually going up the ranks to Fannie or with Fannie Mae right now. And I'm going to let Chris go over the deal, which is, again, like I said, pretty, pretty appalling. But before we get into that, I just want to let you know uh, some upgrades to our PropTracker.com online real estate management tool. We're finishing up our action plans right now, which should be incredible for every single real estate investment company and real estate agent company out there that has a team. So that's just a little um, update there. Yep. So Chris, let's go over the Bank of America deal and exactly the bait and switch stuff they pulled again. Again, I know, big surprise, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this one basically going back a little over a month now uh, talking with the negotiator she uh, she provided uh, the guidelines and the, the, the minimum net and the max to the junior and all that fun stuff that so we the minimum with. net that Fannie Mae would take meaning if they'll take a hundred thousand dollars they need to get 90 grand for right. example so right. exactly exactly so uh, she gave gave me all those numbers um, I, I revised the HUD to make sure everything was uh, was up to you know to meet those guidelines. Uh, hmm, to meet those guidelines. Rough night last night, Chris. No, no, not at all. <laughs> Rough morning. Um, to meet those guidelines, and so and submitted the HUD, and basically you know per that conversation we had was expecting that the next thing in would be uh, a written approval letter. Yep. And lo and behold, I get a counter offer where uh, she was wanting to completely nix all, not some, all of the seller concessions. And they put that on top of their net that they wanted now. Right. So they took five grand away from seller concessions, put it on top of the 170 in change they wanted. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Which the buyer coming in was FHA buyer and they needed those concessions to obviously get the loan. Right, right, right. So. Uh, fought her on that, um, escalated it, uh, you know, to her superiors to basically, you know, inform them of the crap she was trying to pull, and came back. The counter came back again. This time the concessions were there, but she was trying to cut other fees, such as the commissions. Uh, Which commissions on a Fannie Mae loan? They're not allowed to cut. Right. That's a, a big takeaway right there. Right. 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 Because um, the commissions as well as the amount that they were allowing to the junior lien. So again, escalated the file, went back to her, and instead of getting any response at all from her, she declined and closed the file. <laughs> yeah. So, so now, Chris picked up the <clears throat> phone, called Fannie Mae, yeah. and right now we're in the process of going up their chains. We created an e email that we worked on for about a half an hour yesterday yeah. to bullet exactly what happened so this stuff doesn't work out. Um, so the point, of the point of this whole video is, listen, if you guys have something along the, uh, along the lines of, of the story we're telling you, send it in. We need all of the, all, anything that is going on right now so mm -hmm. when we get to higher ups in Fannie Mae, that we will have a lot of ammunition so this crap doesn't happen right. anymore. Right, and part of why I went to Fannie Mae too, just so you guys know, is because in the course of these two counter offers where this negotiator was trying to cut these fees out of the blue, uh, her superiors, I had escalated the file and, and uh, included them in emails and, and contacted them as well, and they obviously must have taken her side if she declined the file and they, you know. Yeah. So, <laughs> so they're going against, they're going against the guidelines of their investor, so that's the reason why we're going right to their investor. Right. Right. So that's the point there. Let's talk about the uh, SunTrust deal that we we, uh, we just got closed after a year long. This is another company that's uh, quite interesting to deal with. They, um, but this this one essentially was just, it went back and forth. There's two mortgages on it. And what would happen is, is the first would go through and they do their thing and uh, issue an approval. And then the second would take exponentially longer and they'd issue their approval but by then the first would have expired and so it's kind of just a matter of just go, kind of going back and forth and trying to work it so that uh, and, and engage how long it's going to take so that I could get both written approvals at the same time. Right. And, so they weren't working together so right. what Chris did is it, the uh, the negotiator was getting extremely extremely frustrated with why it wasn't closing right so Chris pretty much called him out on the carpet said it's your company's fault you got to pick up the phone, talk to your second lien holder, which is a junior lien position, which should have no bearing on the deal anyway, right. and it's it's within their own house. So right. just very directly yeah. explain the, the issue to her, and uh, she, you know at that point she must have just 
called somebody, you know, in power over <laughs> over in the other department and just said, listen, give me a friggin' release right now. <laughs> Which that's a good way though. If you guys are working on um, properties with two mortgages within the same company, always have the first mortgage work with the second mortgage if you could. Yeah. Um, and you have another another property with a long uh, story with along the same lines with Bank of America. Exactly. Yeah. There's there's different ways that you can enlist kind of the help of one or the other negotiator to for them to reach out to the other, for them to work together, and for a deal to um, come together much more smoothly. Uh, SunTrust. It was a matter of getting the um, the written approvals at the same time. Um, and obviously, as soon as I got that, oh, big surprise, the buyer closed. Yeah. Maybe if you had done that a year ago, we could have gotten an offer. Everyone's could have saved a lot of money. Yeah, you know, if you guys could have done your jobs better, but whatever. Now they're they're very nice people. But anyways, other deal um, in this case, and this is another way that um, you'll want to try to get both to work together is if you're if you, two mortgages and you want to try to um, like such as with this one, the first was going to pay three thousand, and you know, oftentimes you know we'll be dealing with a second where they want more than that. And in this case, you know, I talked to the negotiator at the second, and I said to her, I said, you know, the first is also with you guys. They're, they're right now they've, they've approved in writing, as you can see, because you have the approval, three thousand dollars. And she said, okay, well, it's, if it's with us, you know, then we'll we'll accept it. So they it gave me the release for three. And so the Bank of America second, I think we've gone over this a lot, but second mortgage, Chris, tell them the the typical discount ratios they want, and they're for an acceptance letter, what they'll accept. Uh, it's typically five percent of whatever the first mortgage nets, which in this case would have probably been about uh, two to three times what. Okay, so if you're with Bank of America and, and it's got a first and a second, go back to the first negotiator, have them assist you in the negotiation because they'll accept less in the second mortgage. It's gonna be a lot less of a headache. Right. But anyway, that's this week's pre foreclosure daily grind tip of the week. And again, check out our proptracker.com. A real estate management tool. It is second to none. It is awesome. It's for real estate agents, investors, and anyone running a successful real estate company. Krista Drummer Bowes, Bob LaChance, getting back to you with this week's pre foreclosure tip of the week.